This was never ever done in the United States before. It's very rare. Well, we're on our way down to uh, Houston, Texas. Uh, we have patient on board. Extremely dangerous. Multiple heart transplants. And the biggest experience with a building heart in the country. No hospital or air ambulance wanted to undertake this transport. It has never been done. He was literally living on a hair string. High risk transport across multiple states. The machines, the pumps, the vents. On September 28th, Chaim Medical got a phone call about a 17-month-old who was taken into Columbia Hospital, and they noticed that his heart was a little bit enlarged, making it the size of his entire chest, pressing on his lungs. It was a real crisis. This child was headed for a heart transplant. If you do a heart transplant, it's an irreversible step. And one of the options is incomal stem cell treatment. During COVID, we experienced many life-saving situations with a new scientific breakthrough called stem cell therapy. They wanted to avoid a heart transplant for their very young child. Stem cells has the power to fix something that's broken. A study done by Dr. Joshua here in Florida. Rifke sends lots of patients to me and we send lots of cells to around the world. But it was never done in pediatric before. It was a very difficult process to get it approved. First, we had to find a pediatric surgeon that is willing to administer it, and only then we were able to apply for a special exception by the FDA. The first time I heard about the case was from Rivke. Rivke said, could I help arrange the cells to be sent to a doctor in Chicago? Uh, we can use stem cells in order to improve the function of his heart. It was very complicated in terms of FDA approval. And we reached out to the FDA for the administration of these cells. It has never been done before. Uh, for a young child. To try to repair the heart with cells instead of doing a full heart transplant. It has never been administered in order to regenerate the heart muscle. This case was very unusual. It was continuous negotiations with the FDA. It took about a month and a half. While the process of getting the stem cells approved suddenly had a very big deterioration. He was developing severe heart failure. Then the only way to save his life was to put him on a Berlin heart. This is a device that sits outside of the body and assists the heart in order to pump blood. External device that beats for the heart. And then after the device was put in, they agreed to give him the stem cells. We got a special approval from the Food and Drug Administration. We used a stem cell called zincable stem cells. We all work together. Now, stem cells is not magic. It doesn't work in two minutes. The heart was slowly regaining itself. He started to see improvement in his cardiac function. The challenge that arised was to remove a Berlin heart from the own heart. Even the heart inside was something that has never been done before. No one knows how to take this device out as a bridge to a recovered heart. While we know that there is every day an increased risk of a stroke, we had to do everything to get him off the device quick enough. We started looking for a doctor that would be willing to take on the case, and after tons of research... The only doctor in the world that was willing to undertake such a high-risk surgery was the world-renowned Dr. Iki Adachi in Texas Children's Hospital. I had multiple communication with Rebuki and like hundreds of emails. And then we were asked to help with a condition for potential removal of the device. Now the challenge was, how do we transport Isaac with the Berlin Heart from Chicago to Texas? Uh, initially, we tried to do it by ourselves, but there was some logistical problem. So we couldn't provide the transportation. So when I, I called Isaac Leader from Vital One, and I told him, you have to help me save this baby's life. What could go wrong, what might go wrong. Probably the most ridiculous medical transport ever. The drips, the machines, the pumps, the vent doesn't happen in patients with supported with a building heart. No hospital or air ambulance in the world wanted to undertake this transport. Ribke worked very closely with Yankee and the Isaac leader from Vital One. I knew for this transport, I'm going to need the right people to accomplish this task. Well, it was a team effort um, in collaboration with Yankee over at Vital One. 
I contacted my good friend, Dr. Yosef Levin Brown. Bianchi called they wanted to have a physician on board during the transport to make sure that everything was okay, that the patient was stable throughout the transport. On every transport, we take along full ICU equipment. To be able to resuscitate and sustain someone who's rapidly deteriorating. Because when you're 40,000 feet in the air, you have to make it work with whatever you have. The patient was very young. This was a, a critical patient. I called Suroli Knobloch. I couldn't even imagine this is real. There was a, a little boy walking around in the hospital room playing with tubes connected to him. Oh, keep the light. Yay! The perfusionist that works for Berlin Heart came with us, special on this flight, all the way from Texas to Chicago and then back to Texas. ISAC leader contacted Bob Kroslowitz, president and CEO of Berlin Heart. They brought along a whole second Berlin Heart so that they can swap out the equipment if necessary. We want to make sure we have one as a backup in case something happens with the operating one. We needed a specific aircraft that was powered enough to handle the amount of voltage needed. One of the difficulties was the fact that we had to carry two large Berlin devices. They weighed uh, over 200 pounds each. The machine and the guy staffing the machine was in Texas. The doctor was in Delaware. Yankin really were in New York. And the pilots have duty time. They can only fly for 12 hours at a time. It was crazy. At the airport, we met the jet that can handle two balloon hearts, our patient, the whole crew, with family members. Everyone got involved in lifting the Berlin heart and Baruch Hashem. I can say I was so lucky to have the most amazing team with me. This was going to be a sea level cabin, which is going to require us to be at a lower altitude. Which uses about 30 to 40 percent more fuel. Flying at lower altitude, uh, that allows us to have a lower cabin pressure, a more closer to sea level. Pressure inside the aircraft is the same as in the room you're sitting in. Make sure that the pump is always filling and completely injecting at all times. We wanted to get down to uh, Houston as quickly as possible. High-risk transport across multiple states who's potentially unstable or could become unstable. The transfer of the building heart is extremely dangerous and we had to make sure that everything works like a well-oiled machine. Everyone knew what they were supposed to do at what time and how. I really enjoy working with Yankee. He's a true professional. He uh, is an expert in his craft. I'm really surprised about the dedication to solve problems along this way. Berlin Hard themselves came to the plane to witness history happening. Dr. Adachi was blown away that we actually pulled this off. Everyone came to Isaac's room to watch what had just happened. Texas Children's Hospital themselves doubted this transport. The first step we did after you know, he got admitted here was to see if we can do the uh, explantation safely. And Baruch Hashem, the surgery was a success. The outcome was very, very favorable. Doing the surgery was the, probably the easiest <laughs> within the entire you know, journey. Amazing to see, if you look at the before and the after, he's running around, he has these like, cannulas with his external heart, and he's always tripping over wires the whole time. But well, now you see him, he can run free, he has nothing going on. He's acting like a regular kid, he goes to school like a regular kid. He's healthy. So Ribuki was Yankee and Isaac leader from Vital One. Actually, we made this, you know, possible. I feel honored and privileged that I was able to lead a team that saved Isaac's life.